in, in this bill is going to, if passed, would allow a mother in North Dakota to kidnap her own child and bring them across state lines to have that child sterilized against the wishes of the father. And you could, this would create a court case where the father's, you know, wanting the, their child to not have their gender transitioned, right? Have surgery or whatever. And this, this is basically writing the legislation, writing law for the courts to look at, to say, nope, this is the law in Minnesota that uh, we're not going to uh, deal with any courts from another state trying to stop this from happening. Um, this is going to be a state to kidnap your child and bring them to, to transition them against the will of, well, actually it could be against the will of both parents. It could be someone else, a teacher or somebody kidnapping a child and bringing them here. Uh, this is, this is going to be uh, pretty bold legislation. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know about that last part, whether it could be somebody who isn't a parent based upon what I'm reading here in the bill. It's, it says that a law of another state that authorizes a state agency to remove a child from the child's parent or guardian because the parent or guardian allowed the child to receive gender affirming health care um, as defined in such and such and where forth is against the public policy of this state and must not be enforced or applied. So it seems to be tailored very much at intervening in child custody cases where the basis of the custody dispute in the state where the child is being transported from has something to do with gender identity and gender affirming care. But regardless, no matter how, no matter what, which way you cut it or, or, or how precise or targeted the policy is, this is quite literally this, this is what I'm about to say is going to sound like exaggerated political rhetoric. And this is the, the biggest problem that I've had so far as a legislator is that every time I tell people what the Democrats are doing, they, they don't believe me and they assume I must be exaggerating because it's so outrageous and absurd and obscene that it's that it seems as though I must be exaggerating. But what I'm about to say is 100% factually correct. Okay. This is the kidnap to poison and mutilate bill. That's what this is. This is a bill that would enable, as Jeremy uh, indicates, one parent to literally kidnap their child from the other parent, bring them across state lines to Minnesota for the purposes of poisoning and mutilating and sterilizing that child. That's what this bill enables. It's there, there are no words. And that's another thing that I found myself saying multiple times in just one month of this legislative session in Minnesota. Some words that come close, the, the words that come the closest would be things like reprehensible, abhorrent, obscene, scandalous, satanic. I mean, they, go down the Rolodex of all the worst adjectives you could apply to a given policy, and they're inadequate to describe what this bill does. You know, the way that you read the bill, it looks like it's written to uh, prevent a court order from another state to uh, remove that child from the custody of their parents, because uh, some states may believe that it's child abuse to subject their child to, you know, sterilization or mutilation. But I, I, I do believe that if a child in another state whose parents did not support them transitioning escaped to Minnesota with, with an adult, whether it be their teacher or a counselor at school or some other adult, um, that if that went to court, this type of legislation would be extended to apply to, to give that child the ability to, uh, what do you call that when they, when they, uh, become an emancipation, adult, emancipation, emancipation from their parents or everything else. I mean, it would, it would be a court case. Minnesota is trying to make themselves a just this this haven for mutilating children. This is the same state that wouldn't uh, wouldn't ban mutilation of children, you know, female circumcision. You know, it is it, it's just appalling. But this comes back to parental rights. I mean, we're not talking about whether or not a child thinks they're another gender and to to let them wear different outfits at school. We're talking about chemical, you know, permanently altering a child. Yes. Blocking puberty from happening, physically altering their body. 
sterilizing them for life, which the legislature just passed as a right of all people, not adults, but to children too. But the legislation passed last year, the PRO Act, gives every person the right to choose their sterilization. And th th this legislation, I mean, they set the groundwork for these bills to now apply uh, more broadly than you can even interpret it uh, on its own. In fact, on the House floor and in the Senate, when they talked about legislation that's also in the pipe to pass, the Democrats were quick to stand up and, and to try to narrow the scope of the debate to only the bill on the floor. It's hard to look at the bill being debated when you know that the bills waiting in the wings will work to expand that, right? Correct. If If this bill passes now, you know, look at what is going to be applied and uh those those five different pieces that they're trying to pass separately when put together create le legislatively i mean it, it's it's going to be just rat the state will be absolutely radical yeah i mean look it, and again i run into this problem of the more accurate i am in describing what's taking place the less plausible it sounds because that's how radical and extreme and obscene this Democrat governing majority of Minnesota is. Th this has been the destroy, kill, and mutilate children session so far in 2023. I mean, their first bill was a bill to literally destroy human life, to kill unborn and born children. And they, they, they've got another bill coming through the pipe, House File 91, that will repeal the, the feeble remaining restrictions on things like providing medical care to a baby that's been born alive in the process of a botched abortion. I mean, this, this is how they started off with their first legislative proposal. They started off with a declaration of war against life itself and against children in particular. And this is a furtherance of that. They're saying to the extent, to the extent that children are allowed to exist in the first place, we are going to enable to the greatest extent the Overton window allows us the ability of those children to be corrupted, maimed, defaced, and destroyed as early as possible, but whenever we can get to them. It, you are dealing with, I keep telling people, this is the heart of darkness. This is, this is a pit of evil. This is an abyss that I find myself navigating down here in St. Paul. And none of those terms are even adequate to describe it. The depth of evil that is governing this place is unfathomable. And the only, at this point, it really is in the hands of God to stop these people. And maybe he won't as judgment against us because we allowed it to happen.